Morning, everyone. Uh, this Congress continues to get things done for the American people. Already this year, we've passed a real entitlement reform, a balanced budget blueprint, uh, new resources to improve uh, veterans' health care, uh, new tools to fight human trafficking, uh, more reforms to make uh, trade agreements more transparent, uh, and to help create more jobs for American workers. Uh, this week, we'll pass another good jobs bill and 
will act to hold uh, the Veterans Administration accountable for continuing uh, to fail our veterans. Uh, lastly, despite uh, evidence to the contrary, uh, Secretary Clinton continues uh, to maintain that she never had classified emails. Now, let's not be fooled here. Uh, Secretary Clinton is a former senator, a former Secretary of State. Uh, she knows exactly how classifying material works. At this point, the best thing for Mrs. Clinton to do is to come clean and just turn the server over to the IG at the State Department. Good morning. As we finish up the first seven months of this new American Congress, um, the statistics are in. This Congress is more accountable, more open, more productive, and more effective. If you look from the accountability, that work that's done in committee, the 30-year average is 7.4 percent of the bills get out of committee. This Congress is at 10.1. When you look at open, the average is uh, roughly 200 amendments on the floor. We are more than 200 above that for an openness of a voice on both sides of the aisle. Productivity, this is uh, from the bills passed. We are 190 bills already through on this Congress. The average is 125. Effectiveness, this is the second most effective Republican majority Congress in modern history, where we have gone through more than 29 bills enacted that become law. We have a long way to go, but this is the first start where we'll continue to grow upon. And when you look at the bills that are going to be on the floor this week, you know, when the country was created, we had three co-equal branches. They're not co-equal today. So the RAINS Act brings the voice of the public back in. That it simply says that the agency tries to legislate or create a major ruling, meaning when it is scored, if it costs more than $100 million to the American public, that it has a voice in Congress and in the Senate, that he has a check and a balance. The VA, this Congress this has been a priority to change in the VA. Unfortunately, even though then we got a new secretary, those that need to depart to make sure we get the right people on the bus have not gone through. So we have the VA Accountability Act to as well. We know we do not want to have a shortfall when it comes to highways. You'll see that we posted today that we will vote on a three-month extension to October 29th, be fully funded to then so we can work out our disagreements in the process. We'll, and within that bill, we will also deal with the shortfall in the VA when it comes to funding, hire more heroes, and also when it comes Sam Johnson's bills dealing with HSA for veterans. Uh, we will get our work done and we will continue to grow and make this country more prosperous. This year, Congress has worked hard to address the problems facing the American people and also to make Washington more accountable to the people that we all serve. Uh, when we return in September, there are going to be a number of issues that are going to move fast uh, through Congress that we're going to be addressing. Uh, one of those issues that we're going to be talking a lot about during the August recess and then dealing with in September is going to be this Iran deal. Uh, when you talk to people uh, of all parties, this is not a partisan issue. Support of Israel is not a partisan issue. Uh, and yet when you look at what our allies in that region are saying about this deal, that, that's something we should be paying very close attention to. Uh, the fact that Israel uh, is vocally expressing opposition uh, to the deal and specifically pointing out uh, components of this deal that pose a major threat to them. Uh, clearly there's a major threat to the United States uh, with this deal with Iran. Uh, but when you look at what threat it poses to our friends in the region, that also ought to be something that's considered very seriously. Uh, as members of Congress think about this, talk about it with their constituents uh, during the August recess, and then return to confront this, uh, it's going to be something that weighs heavily on the minds of American people more and more as they find out just how dangerous uh, the threat of a nuclear-armed Iran could be to the world, uh, and especially to the United States of America and our allies like Israel. Good morning. <clears throat> For a moment, I'd like you to imagine a VA where there is no waiting list to see a doctor, where you could book your appointments online 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where the red carpet is rolled out to our heroes to receive that world-class treatment for the world-class service that they have shown our nation. I believe it's all possible, but it does require a fundamental change in the leadership at the more than a year 
since the horrific treatment of our veterans was exposed. You know what? The numbers are even worse. 50% of our, our, the, of our veterans are waiting, 50% more are waiting a month or more to get an appointment than they were a year ago. That's why I am pleased to see the House moving forward on the VA Accountability Act, which is really going to make it easier for us to hold officials accountable all throughout the VA. But you know what? That's not just, that's not going to solve the problem in and of itself. We really need to rethink what is an outdated model of servicing our veterans. And that's why I'm excited to be introducing some legislation this week that's actually going to allow for self scheduling websites where veterans could use the same technology that is available in the private sector to schedule and confirm private medical appointments. You know what? It's estimated that 18 percent of VA a, a doctor's appointments actually go unfilled because either people don't show up or there's cancellations. You know what? These slots could be filled with the veterans that are waiting if we were using some of this technology that's available. No more waiting. No more sitting by the phone waiting and hoping that someone might follow up. And this is just one example of what I believe we need to be uh, getting towards a 21st century VA for our veterans that have served us. Good morning. I'm Congresswoman Martha McSally from Arizona's second congressional district. We have over 84,000 veterans in southern Arizona. Uh, each one of them know when they, when they raise their right hand, uh, like I did, uh, they pledge to defend our country and we have a covenant with them that we're going to take care of them after they serve when they come home. Uh, I served 26 years myself and I get my care at the VA, so I'm a bit of an undercover boss when I go there and see uh, what they're dealing with. Uh, like many veterans in my district, I was disgusted to see last year uh, the scandals and uh, the impact that it was having on our veterans uh, as they're waiting for care, uh, many of them suffering, uh, and many died. Uh, now it's been over a year, and several people have just not been held accountable. It has taken way too long. The VA Accountability Act provides the Secretary of the VA the flexibility that he needs to fire employees that are found guilty of mismanagement or poor conduct. It fixes the never-ending removal process that has resulted in almost no accountability uh, for those who have had monumental failures uh, towards our heroes. And it gives enhanced protections for whistleblowers. This is the least that we could do. Veterans around the country and citizens around the country are demanding accountability from the VA. It's time to stop slow walking uh, these reforms and start fixing these problems. Uh, another veterans bill I do want to point out that we voted on by voice vote last night was the Ruth Moore Act. Uh, this is related to victims of military sexual trauma uh, not getting that the care they need uh, for post-traumatic stress disorder. Ruth Moore waited 23 years after being repeatedly raped by her supervisor. She finally got the benefits that she needed at the VA. So the Ruth Moore Act addresses that issue and allows the many victims and the scourge of military sexual trauma to get the care that they need at the VA. Thank you. Well, the first answer is no. And the second answer is that uh, I, the House wants to produce a long-term highway bill. And our, the members of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee ought to have an opportunity uh, to move a bill through their committee and bring it to the floor uh, that will provide for a long-term highway bill. And, uh, and so uh, we've got work to do. And uh, we need to buy some time in order to get that work done. Do you anticipate going to conference with them? Pardon me? Do you anticipate going to conference with them? I do. I do. I have no idea. You, uh, I guess I have a two-four question as well. Did you, um, did you not discuss this? With, you're going to leave town, and you have. Well, it was discussed. Time. Yes. Okay, so it was discussed. Yes, it was discussed. And how do you solve? But was it pre-baked? No. I, I guess I don't know what the but um, did you? <laughs> did, McConnell says flatly, no, he's not interested in tax reform to fund the highway bill, and you guys are want to do that. How do you solve that? I want a long-term highway bill that's fully paid for. Uh, and uh, that's been the goal all year. It continues to be the goal. We've been trying to do this for four years. It's time uh, to get it across the finish line. And I'm going to do everything I can uh, to get to a long-term highway bill by the end of October. Last question. What is your anticipation as a result of this conversation with the majority of the 
I, I don't know. I don't have a result. Mr. Speaker, uh, do you anticipate to bring the three-month bill to the floor on Wednesday and then leave town a day early? Yes. Well, I'm not sure that uh, the premise of your question is accurate. I think these cases have been dealt with, and uh, uh, and decisions uh, have been made with regard uh, to uh, sanctions on those individuals. Last one. Well, listen, Senator McConnell and I work uh, very closely together on a whole host of issues. Uh, but there are times when, uh, you know, the, the Senate has to do what the Senate has to do and the House has to do what it has to do. Uh, but if you'll notice, it doesn't really happen very often. It's just a, it's happening this week. Thanks. <laughs>